Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be theory building the absolute most bang for your buck $1,000 gaming PC. You guys know that most of the time I tend to spend a little extra money to make my builds look baller, color coordinated, etc. But not today. Today's $1,000 build is all performance and no money will be wasted. Side note, I'm hoping that this is my last video upload while I'm out here on my military deployment. So you guys know that means we'll be back to some actual build videos and not theory builds here very soon. Soon. Links are in the description for everything I talk about today. Let's get into it. All right, so to kick things off with the processor, I decided to go with the Ryzen 5 1600, which is almost always around 200 bucks with a stock cooler. This is a six core, 12 thread beast of a CPU that's clocked at 3.2 gigahertz and boosts up to 3.6. Even with the stock cooler, you'll still be able to overclock it a little bit, but you can definitely get even more performance out of it if you spend some more money on a cooler. For the motherboard, we are going with an ASRock AB350 Pro 4, which is an ATX size board, and it's actually packed some solid features. The main ones I care about are four sticks for RAM so you can upgrade in the future, an M.2 slot if you want to go with a super fast SSD, a USB type C slot for some quote future proofing, and it even supports AMD Crossfire for multiple GPUs if you do decide to go the AMD route, which spoiler alert, we didn't. For RAM, I went with literally the cheapest 16 gigabyte kit I could find at the time of making this video, and that's the Gel Gil? I don't even know how to pronounce that brand, but it's a 2x8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 2400 megahertz. Now these sticks definitely aren't fast, but RAM prices these days are absolutely awful, practically double what they should be, so I would personally save your money and get slower RAM sticks so you have more money on the graphics card, but that's up to you. For some storage options, I went with a very cheap 128GB A Data SSD, and this will let you put your operating system and some applications and games on there so you can run them way faster than a traditional hard drive. I've used these A Data drives in other builds, and they are actually very reliable so I wouldn't worry about buying an off-brand here. For the rest of the storage I went with a 2TB Seagate Barracuda drive. Like I explained in my recent $700 Amazon gaming PC build, I also love these Barracuda drives and I've gotten way better results with these compared to Western Digital's hard drives. You certainly can choose to go with a 1TB drive and put that money elsewhere, but for a $1000 build I personally thought 2TB was more appropriate. Next up we have the case and here you can see that I didn't care at all about the aesthetics and saved as much money as I could. This DIY PC Solo One Mid Tower ATX case is on sale right now for a measly $18. This is a ridiculous price for this size of a case and although I can't guarantee that there aren't any sharp edges here, this will help us get better performance with the rest of our parts. Personally, if this were my build, I would probably take that money away from the 2TB hard drive and go with a little bit nicer of a case, but that's just me. Next up we have the power supply and there's actually a really good deal on this Thermaltake 500W 80 plus certified PSU and it's sitting right now for only 25 bucks after a Newegg mail-in rebate. 500 watts is definitely enough for some overclocking on this build for both the CPU and the GPU. And finally, speaking of that GPU, I went with the GTX 1070, specifically this Gigabyte 8 Gigabyte mini version which right now is 430 bucks. Now listen here for a minute, I only went with this mini card because at the time of making this video, this is literally the only GTX 1070 on the market at a decent price. This past weekend, GPU prices have skyrocketed and the prices are crazy again so I would definitely get any GTX 1070 that you can find at this price range. You don't necessarily have to go with this mini card. Please don't talk smack in the comment section for me going with the mini card. I'm serious now, this is only because of the current stock. Okay now that's out of the way, that's going to wrap up our $1000 pure performance gaming PC build. If you want to make some changes here and there, I would suggest spending some money on a better cooler so you can get some better overclocking out of your CPU. I would definitely want to take advantage of that M.2 SSD slot in the future for insanely fast read and write speeds. The 2400 megahertz RAM sticks could definitely get replaced with sticks that are at least 3000 megahertz. And like I just stressed, I would personally prefer a full size GTX 1070 so you can get a little bit better overclocking out of it as well. And before wrapping up this video, I obviously can't benchmark this theory build for you guys, but here's some benchmarks that you can expect as I research this exact same setup through other YouTube videos. Shadow of Mordor in 1080p Ultra will average over 140 FPS, Battlefield 1 in 1080p Ultra will average around 100 FPS, and the good old Crisis 3 will still handle around 100 FPS in 1080p with high settings. Clearly with a Ryzen 5 1600 and a GTX 1070, you'll be able to hit very high frames in 1080p, and this build will certainly do some damage in the 1440p resolution as well. Well that wraps up my $1000 pure performance gaming PC theory build. Other than the suggestions that I said 
bit towards the end of the video, be sure to let me know down in the comment section what you would change for this build. If you're looking to build your own PC and save some money, be sure to check out my top 10 tips for saving money when building a PC video. I'll have that link down in the description and in the upper right hand corner. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.